Hi, I'm Dr. Tash. In this episode, we'll be talking about letrozole. Letrozole is an aromatase inhibitor. It blocks an enzyme called aromatase, which converts testosterone to estrogen. Letrozole is used in hormone receptor positive breast cancer, particularly in postmenopausal women. It helps to starve cancer cells by depriving them of estrogen. You may have heard of clomiphene or clomid. Well, letrozole is slowly taking over from where clomid took off. Um, they work in a similar way in that they induce ovulation, but they work differently. So Clomid actually blocks estrogen receptors, whereas Letrozole blocks estrogen production. Studies to date show that Letrozole is as equally effective as Clomid is in terms of inducing ovulation. The good thing about Letrozole is that it has less anti-estrogenic effects than Clomid like hot flushes, for example. Studies to date show that letrozole is not associated with increased chance of birth defects. Unlike clomiphene or clomid, letrozole does not thin the endometrium. It has favorable effects on the uterine lining as it allows good blood flow. By reducing estrogen, letrozole tricks the brain into making GnRH, which then causes the release of FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. In the ovary, it increases androgen levels which may then increase ovarian FSH receptors. Letrozole can also be useful during ovarian stimulation in that it makes the receptors more sensitive to FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. The half-life of letrozole is about 45 hours, which means that by the time the embryo has implanted, the drug has been cleared from the system. Letrozole is not suitable for use in all women though, some women have hypothalamic amenorrhea. They have low FSH and low LH. Letrozole will not work in these women. Letrozole can also be combined with intrauterine insemination, which is when we inject the sperm directly into the uterus. One side effect of letrozole are joint aches and pains. Letrozole is just as effective as laparoscopic diathermy to the ovaries. This is when we make small holes in the ovaries in women with polycystic ovaries. In terms of success rates, of live birth rates that is, it's comparable to women with clomiphene citrate. Unlike clomiphene, letrozole does not thicken the cervical mucus. A thickened mucus acts as a barrier to sperm penetration and pregnancy. As letrozole lowers estrogen production, Estrogen levels are more physiological around the time of ovulation. In this way, letrozole is more likely to cause monoovulation, that is the development of one dominant follicle. Another common side effect of letrozole are night sweats and hot flushes, similar to clomiphene citrate. Letrozole is taken orally, just like clomiphene. It's usually taken for about five days, but in some women who are resistant to clomiphene, it can be prescribed for up to 10 days. Letrozole may also be used as part of ovarian stimulation in women who are poor responders. And the reason why, the thinking is that maybe letrozole increases the sensitivity of the follicle to follicle stimulating hormone. Progesterone levels in the mid luteal phase of the menstrual cycle are lower when we use letrozole compared with clomiphene citrate. There have been randomized control trials looking at letrozole and clomiphene and letrozole is just as effective as clomiphene in inducing ovulation. It's good to know that letrozole is overall a safe drug to use. Thank you for watching this episode of Dr. Tash TV. If you've enjoyed it, please share it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future goodies and so that you can continue watching Dr. Tash TV episodes. Until then, be well.